Welcome again to lesson module four. Uh, this is the second part of the second phase of our uh, uh, teaching and learning. Uh, lesson module four is basically going to talk about the progressive evolution of the UNFCC and its treaties. How this climate conference have been uh, moving on, basically the, the trajectory, how did they come to certain agreement? There's been some major conferences in the process where it has attracted a lot of people. What was expected to be uh, the outcome of them? We're going to be uh, going through them uh, at this module. Okay, we're ready, let's start. Now, we have an online, as usual, uh, we're going to talk about the UNFCC process and the road to the Kyoto Protocol. You know, we started with the convention, we moved to the protocol. And then when we had the protocol, we started moving to the Copenhagen climate conferences in Denmark. And what was happening in the interim while we were moving to the Copenhagen? Then from the Copenhagen, we began our movement towards the Paris Agreement. And along the route, what happened? And finally, we got the Paris Agreement and then we had to operationalize it, which is basically the rule book. So let's go on. Okay, the UNFC and the road to the Kyoto Protocol. We know that the COP1 was in 1995 in Berlin, Germany. In Berlin, Germany, it was realized that the convention is mainly voluntary in nature with no legal binding commitments. And this wouldn't help the process of reducing the emissions. So parties, the conference decided to establish an ad hoc working group called uh, on the Berlin mandate. The mandate, there was a mandate in Berlin that uh, uh, there's a need to develop legally binding targets for developing countries. This process was deliberated during the second COP, the second conference in 1996 in Geneva, Switzerland, where there was the Geneva Declaration, which called upon parties to accelerate negotiations for a legally binding protocol. Then in the next COP, COP3 in 1997, which took place in Kyoto, Japan, the conference adopted the Kyoto Protocol. The Kyoto Protocol is a legally binding emission targets for developed countries on six major cases. These are carbon dioxide, methane, nitroxide, hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, and sulfur hexafluoride. The conference also established three mechanisms. This was a clean development mechanism, which was basically a trading mechanism between developed countries and developing countries. And there was a joint implementation a mechanism, which was between developed countries. And there was also an emission trading schemes, which were, could have been done within a developed country or could have been done within another country. But then the conference had not, you know, negotiated the rule book of the Kyoto Protocol. So we went on to the next uh, conference, COP4, 1999, Buenos Aires, Argentina. In Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, the conference, uh, came up with the Buenos Aires Action Plan, which allowed a two-year period to develop the mechanism for implementation of the Kyoto Protocol. The COP also decided to review the financial mechanisms every four years. Now, moving on, we move on to COP5 in Geneva again, where negotiations continues. Uh, 
basically on the guidelines for preparation national communications for developed countries, capacity building, transfer of technology, and flexible mechanism. This was all a build up on uh, the rule book or the implementation of the Kyoto Protocol. Then the next conference was at The Hague in 2000, COP6, Netherlands. Uh, COP6 in the Netherlands, the first part of the negotiation flattered. Nothing came out. There was no decision. Unfortunately, uh, the conference decided that it would take COP6 part two, where it was in Germany born. Parties agreed on the mechanism to implement the protocol. Unfortunately, the US uh, didn't want to be part of that uh, process or that uh, uh, decision. The COP went on to Morocco, Marrakesh in 2001. And Marrakesh, the detailed rules for implementation of the protocols were adopted and they called them the Marrakesh Accord, the famous Marrakesh Accord. At the same time, the conference adopted two climate funds, which was the Special Climate Fund and the Least Developing Country Fund. The Special Climate Fund, fund was established to finance projects related to adaptation, technology transfer, capacity building, energy, transport, industry, agriculture, forest, waste management, and economic diversification in developing countries. And the LTCF was established to support work programs to assist these developed countries carry out inter other their preparation and implementation of their National Adaptation Program of Actions, NAPA. The, co the conference then move on. This conference are annually. So they move around uh, the five regional uh, continent of the UN, UN. The next COP was in Delhi, India, COP 8, 2002. In Delhi, there was, the outcome was a Delhi declaration, which basically called upon developed countries to transfer technology to developing countries. Now, we, we then move on to COP9 in Milan, Italy, COP10 again, Buenos Aires, Argentina, COP11, COP Montreal, Canada, and COP12, Nairobi, Kenya. COP9 adopted a new emission reporting guideline based on the IPCC, uh, based on IPCC. These were the, were the guidelines, procedures, and modalities for the greenhouse gas inventory. And also made further recommendation of the SSC and LTC to be further developed. Uh, in Argentina, COP10, the conference addressed and adopted numerous decisions and conclusions on issues related to development and transfer of technology, land use, land use change and forest, financial mechanism, national communication for Annex One countries, capacity building, adaptation, and response measure to the climate impact. There was also a issues of uh, Article 6 of the Convention and issues of adaptation and mitigations were also considered in the COP10. COP11 in Montreal, Canada, it was the first COP whereby uh, parties serving as a meeting of the Kyoto Protocol met concurrently with the COP Friends of Parties. The COP addressed the means of implementation, the average threat of climate change on developing countries and least developed countries, and also initiated the process of what happens 
beyond the KP. The next scope in Nairobi, uh, the conference further revised the financial mechanisms and adopted the Nairobi Work Program, which is basically a program on adaptation, uh, means of adaptation, programs of uh, how adaptation can be supported. Moving on now to the road to Copenhagen and Intermediate and COP and CDM. We went on to COP 13, 2007, Bali, Indonesia, where the conference adopted the Bali Roadmap, which was basically a set of key decisions that represented various trends that were seen as key to reaching a global climate deal. This Bali Roadmap consisted of the Bali Action Plan, which launched a new comprehensive process to enable a full and effective and sustainable implementation of the convention through long-term cooperative actions, which were termed now up to and beyond 2012, with the aim of reaching an agreed outcome and adopted decision at COP15 in Copenhagen. The Bali Action Plan had the shared vision, mitigation, adaptation, technology, and finance, five elements. At the same time, uh, the process had already started in Montreal, whereby the conference were beginning to look as to what will happen after the first commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol. Moving on to COP14, 2008, Poznan, Poland, Parties began negotiating on financial mechanism to help poor countries adapt to the effect of the climate change following uh, the work program, the Nairobi work program, which uh, was also calling upon best practice, lesson learned, support for adaptation. At the same time, negotiation continued on what will succeed the Kyoto Protocol. And then the conference also adapted the Poznan Technology Transfer Work Program, where parties uh, were given the opportunity to do the techn technology needs assessment, a pilot phase. Moving on to COP15, 2009, Copenhagen in Denmark. This COP was set by the Artwork Working Group of the KP, which was looking as to what will succeed the Kyoto Protocol commitment period from 2008 to 2012, and the outward working group on long-term cooperative actions, which were now up to and beyond 2012. Unfortunately, the COP lost track. When developed countries started advocating for bed and sharing, this was not accepted by developing countries who felt that it does not support the principles of CBDR uh, and RC, that's common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capacity. Unfortunately, the conference tabled a Copenhagen Accord, Accord that said for consensus. <coughs> which advocated for the continuation of the Kyoto Protocol, but due to lack of consensus, it was not adopted. So the Copenhagen Conference, Climate Change Conference, failed in a way to sort of uh, adopt major decisions that will help countries uh, to reduce their emissions and adapt to the climate change impact. Then the conference went on to Cancun, Mexico, 2010, COP16. In Cancun, the Copenhagen was adopted and the Copenhagen included the climate goal, limiting climate to below two degrees 
while pursuing efforts to reduce increase to 1.5 degrees. It also uh, adopted decisions to protect vulnerable forests and establish the Green Climate Fund for developing countries for mitigation and adaptation. It also established the Adaptation Committee. And it set the course of the second commitment of the, of the KP. And the conference received pledges from developing countries to contribute US dollar 1 billion up to 2020, which is a financial aid to developing countries. Now, after the Cancun uh, conference, climate change conference, we then started, the, 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 the conference started building towards the Paris Agreement. And the next uh, climate change conference was in Durban, South Africa, uh, 2011, COP17, CMP7. Now the COP and the Kyoto Protocol were now meeting concurrently. So there will be a plenary for COP and then it will be followed by a plenary for Kyoto Protocol. Now in Deben, the seed for the Paris Agreement was sown in. It was confirmed that we, the parties need to start negotiating for the temperature goal and the adaptation goal, including the finance goal. Moving on to the next COP, COP 18, 2012 in Doha. The seed for the Paris Agreement started sprouting. And the conferences adopted the second commitment period of the Kyoto Protocol, which was from 2012, 2013 to 2020. And for the first time, the third pillar in the climate change process, loss and damage was incorporated. And from there, there are now three pillars in the climate change process. It's mitigation, adaptation, and loss and damage. Uh, COP19 in Warsaw, uh, the conference, uh, map the road for the Paris Agreement, which is basically a legally binding treaty to reduce greenhouse emission. Uh, the, at the same time, the, the conference in Warsaw adopted a, a set of system, a system to track loss and damages, but they adopted a system was not binding and progress was made on the US dollar 100 billion pledged by developed countries. Now, uh, COP20 in Lima, Peru, parties submitted their intended national development commitments. And at the same time, the conference launched the non-state actor zone for climate action portal for online system to track and aggregate climate actions taken by subnationals and non-state actors. The conference then moved on to Paris, France, COP21, which was 2015. The conference adopted the Paris Agreement and agreed to keeping global temperature increase well below two degrees pre-industrial period and pursue efforts to limit the temperature to 1.5. It also adapted the adaptation goal, which was basically a 
to build resilient nation, uh, to adapt for sustainable development, and it also adopted the financial funds goal, which is basically to support uh, developing countries in their climate action. The adopted Paris call for a picking in mid century to achieve a balance between anthropic emissions by sources and removal by sinks in the second half of the century. This was the call for the net zero emission by 2050. It also uh, adopted the INDC as national development contributions. And then within uh, the adopted uh, uh, decisions with various elements, cooperative approaches, with capacity building, with transparency of framework, transparency actions and support with technology, with systematic observations, basically the whole negotiated elements of the conventions, some most of them were moved to the Paris Agreement. Even the, uh, uh, the constituted bodies established by the convention, which includes uh, the adaptation committee, uh, the executive committee for technology development, uh, uh, you name it, they are all serving uh, the Paris Agreement, including the response measure to the impacts of uh, climate change in developing countries. Moving on, uh, we now see what we will call it a cloud of this trajectory of the conferences, starting from uh, the UNFCC to the Kyoto Pro the Paris Agreement and now to COP26. This is all the framework involved in the negotiations where we've got the secretary, the blue, the governing body, the subsidiary bodies, the rules of procedure which are governing the process. And we also have considered bodies which have been established, the mechanisms, financial mechanisms, the means of implementations, the parties, uh, the non-governmental organizations and other UN organizations. This is the box that contains all that has been happening. We see that uh, uh, there are about 90, 196 parties. Uh, we see that developed countries are asked to take the lead in reducing the emissions. We see that uh, uh, the Kyoto Protocol rules were established. Uh, we see that uh, uh, the Kyoto Protocol couldn't uh, uh, secure a, a universal support because it was only targeting uh, developed countries, whereas there were developing countries whose emissions were growing and they needed to come into the play. We see the Copenhagen uh, conference failing. We see the Cancun uh, conference setting up Cancun agreements. We see the red coming in, the forest uh, deforestation and afforestation uh, mitigation or as a removal, uh, important removal of emissions. We see the pledges. Uh, we see that uh, within the uh, Paris Agreement, there was an agreement of the temperature goal, the NTC. But at the same time, it is quite clear that the Paris Agreement rule book is not complete yet. Uh, we need to complete uh, the mechanisms, the market and non mechanisms. We need to look into uh, the timeframes and all other matters that are ongoing within the, the process. Uh, when it comes to operationalization of the peace agreements rule book, we've noted that the peace agreement is more like a high, it's, it more like takes a hybrid approach where it's blending a bottom-up flexibility to promote broader participation with top-down rules to promote accountability and ambition. 
It also calls for the maintenance and periodical updates of the national development commitment, contributions, and DC every five years. And they have to outline self-defined mitigations, target subject to common time frame that is still being negotiated. Parties are expected to prepare national, green, national greenhouse inventory report using good practice accepted by IPCC. Parties are expected to submit biennial transparency report that contains national greenhouse gas inventory, information necessary to track in implementing and achieving in their NDCs. It established two levels of review, technical expert review, peer review called for facilitative material consideration of progress. It created the CB to help strengthen institutional and capacity for developing countries, provide tools and training, assist in improving transparency over time. It calls for MRV for support and stock tech that has three phases, information collection, technical assessment, consideration of output, and then establish the market and non-market approaches that are still under negotiation. There are also other elements that are still under negotiations. The systematic observations are still under uh, negotiations, uh, the time frame as well. And uh, there are also some final touch uh, that are still under negotiations in some other elements, such as the transparency, uh, the modalities and guidelines of the other reports, uh, the technical aspect review, and the peer review consultative multilateral conservation transport. That brings me to the end of this uh, lesson modules. Please take the quiz. And thank you very much for your attention. I thank you very much. Uh, I will see you in the next last section of this training, which will be module, module five and six. And we'll be talking now about how national delegations are basically composed. We'll be talking about participation now in the negotiations. And we'll also be looking at what are the expectations of COP26, even though COP26 is ongoing. We'll still talk about it. Probably by then there will have been uh, some decisions, uh, but I think it will refresh your memories when we talk about it and then probably you'll understand the decision much better. So until then, bye.